Okay. Go ahead, hello. So good evening <coughs> to us all in Israel and good morning to you, all the guys in Maui, Hawaii. Thanks, uh, Keith Tabu, for joining us for this uh, Zoom meeting. It's a pleasure for us to host you. Thank you. Uh, I really appreciate appreciate it. Um, I think uh, um, I would like to start with Moan to tell us a little bit what is he doing there in the middle of the <laughs> and he got there with his huge family. Okay. The lucky one. <laughs> so I'm here for almost a month. Uh, I started by two weeks uh, by myself. Like uh, my family was uh, in New Jersey, and. Uh, I was able to surf and windsurf every day, morning, noon, and evening sessions. It's a, it's a place, it's an amazing place. Swells are coming in like every week, and uh, one swell goes and another one is coming. We had already two big swells uh, that played Jaws and uh, Ray, and uh, it's, it's a place. Uh, all kinds of conditions, like really uh, places like Kanaha that you can go on waves, <coughs> big waves, but not uh, so scary waves, and the Hokipa, which is which can be really stress stressful, <laughs> uh, and from time to time you you visit the rocks, but it is so much fun here, and uh, with family it's like a totally different story. Uh, when you have a uh, wife and four kids uh, around, you, you have to manage between the surf and uh, sightseeing and doing fun stuff. But there is a lot of fun places to be and to go, a lot of nature, a lot of uh, forest, water everywhere, rivers, and uh, it's such a great place to be for a visit. Uh, <coughs> that's that's uh, mainly uh, uh, my life for for the next uh, three weeks. We're gonna come back uh, after Christmas. So hope you guys are having fun. I heard no storms around, unfortunately, in in the in this winter yet. But hopefully soon. And that's it about me. We can uh, talk a lot more later. <laughs> but now we have Keith with us. So, uh, Alon, let's, let's go to Okay. Um, uh, Keith, uh, thanks again. And uh, um, maybe first, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, how long you've been to Hawaii? Um, sure. Been wind surfing and windsurfing? Sure. Well, I was born in Madagascar. I lived there for 10 years. And my dad was French. My mom is American. Um, I moved to the Caribbean when I was 10 to Guadeloupe. And that's where I learned to windsurf with my brother. And at that point, um, we were there for two years. And after that, my father passed and we moved to the, to the US. And I moved to California. And I kept windsurfing as much as I could. But for the most part, I wasn't windsurfing a lot. And then at that point, um, you know, I kept windsurfing and then it, throughout high school, I was in San Diego and I was able to go to Baja, California and keep my windsurfing alive. Um, and it was in, at that point in California that I learned, uh, well, I didn't learn to shape, but I was watching a local shaper. He would shape my windsurf boards and some surfboards. And um, so that's where I kind of developed an eye looking at boards and learning about the process and um, just getting into that whole scene. And um, right out of high school or right at the end of high school, I wasn't a very good student. So I was planning to move to Santa Cruz because the windsurfing was better in California, more wind um, consistently. And I took a last trip the summer before I was meant to move when I was 17 to Baja and I met a guy and he offered me a job in Hawaii. And so I decided to take the job, the building houses. So uh, I basically moved to Maui when I was 17. And um, I started by building houses. And I just came here to windsurf because that's what I loved. And, you know, the whole time I was surfing as well. Um, and then for about 10 years, 
I worked for uh, high tech surf sport. Oh, I worked for two years. I built houses and then got a job with high tech surf sports here in Maui doing their buying. So buying for skate and surf. And I did that for 10 years and developed my windsurfing and then made friends with Jason Pryor, uh, Francisco Goya and Sean Ordinez. And that's when we started Quattro. And um, for about two years, I learned to build boards there. Um, and at one point uh, I needed a couple boards and Sean was doing all the shaping at that point. And he went to Japan for, I think two months and he didn't shape my boards before he left. So I just decided, you know what, I'm going to just shape my boards. And that's kind of when I started to shape boards and then, you know, slowly but surely I just shaped and built boards and then made a few for Jason Pryor and here and there. And, and then that's basically how it developed. So yeah, that's a little bit of my history. I've been here almost 33 years now, 32 years. So All right. this is and definitely How long home. is Quattro? How, how many years? Ooh, Quattro has probably been, yeah, it's been a little more than 20 years. Hmm. Yeah. That's All right. 97. Yeah, it was 97. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> it's been fun. It's a long time, yeah. <laughs> it is a long time. And, uh, you know, those first years, you're young, you're learning, you're trying to make it work and you know, it's definitely challenging. I'd say the last 12 years have really been a, a shift in being able to make a living and not to have to have sponsors and, you know, to make the business grow. And how is it like now? What is your like uh, day schedule? What are you doing? My uh, day schedule. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I that's mean, a good one. In general, I mean, do you um, shape boards all day? Do you surf a lot, windsurf? Mm -hmm. Are you... Well, basically I do windsurf and surf a lot and as much as possible because it's definitely an important part of keeping in contact or in touch in the feel of, of boards and riding waves and you know what I'm feeling with shapes. So it's definitely critical in what I do. I mean, my day usually consists of getting up relatively early 6.30. By about 7.38, I'm here in the shop. I work two, three, four hours depending. Um, and I'll do some designing, get my guys going on the machine you know, the laminating, so on. And then I'll try and shape for one or two hours. Um, it's hard though, because mornings are a lot of time when people want to come and talk and order boards. And that's part of what I do. So it's good. So finding a balance between taking care of the customers and orders and getting the shapes done and keeping the factory flowing can be challenging, but um, I'm managing. And then, you know, afternoons are either meant for surfing or sailing or if I want to take off because the surf's good at nine, I'll leave and then come back. So my schedule's pretty flexible, but I am available in here a lot, <laughs> very a lot. So, and I usually work, I'll usually work Sunday mornings for three or four hours because I can get a lot done because the shop's closed and no one's around. So that's a very efficient time for me to work. Okay. And you get to travel as well. Well, obviously not now. Winter. Yeah, no, not, not now so before. much. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, I, that's what I used to do kind of exclusively for my sponsors is do travel stories, find new places to windsurf and all that. So I did a lot of traveling like that. I don't travel so much to windsurf anymore because it's so good here. And, um, you know, that desire to go find new spots isn't there as much. And I have a family. I have a three-year-old. And, you know, so I have more responsibilities here. So my time to do those kind of things is less. But I do have places I love to go. I, I go to the Marshall Islands in Micronesia every year for two to three weeks if I can and surf and I'll, I'll foil and I'll windsurf. Um, but I don't travel with my gear anymore. I travel with surfboards. I travel with foil stuff to go prone foiling or winging. But I don't travel with windsurf so much. Um, and how is it like now with the, with the coronavirus? I mean, the atmosphere in Maui? crowd um it's um, been it's been uh obviously when everything started it was very strange you know there's definitely a a heaviness in the air and people and but um we are definitely in a little bubble here um at first you know no one was here and so it was very quiet on the roads the water was pretty busy for surfing because nobody was working um and then windsurfing was uncrowded very much uncrowded and it still is relatively uncrowded um now tourism is coming back a little bit um so it's a little busier on the roads and all that but i mean in one way it's been a nice break 
because it was getting very, very, very busy, lots of traffic and so on. Um, you know, but now I think we're ready to have a little bit of tourism and once, once we can open up safely and all that. Um, it's been a nice to feel like it was 35 years ago or whatever, where less people on the roads, less people at the, you know, the waterfalls, less people at the beaches, less people driving around. It was, it was nice to see it again because you would never have expected to see that. And so to experience again and, and actually take advantage of those times. And I went to the other side of the island that usually you can't walk on the beach because there's so many people and there was one other person. So it was, you know, and we made an effort to kind of try and experience these things that we'll probably hopefully never experience again. <laughs> so, you know, so yeah, I was, it was, it was a nice reset um, at the, you know, I think some people are going to have a hard time because of it, but it was a nice reset for me. So I try and take the positive out of it all. Is it affecting on the <laughs> shaping and designing boards? Um, I don't know. You have more for, opportunities this way or less opportunities? For us, it's way more for whatever reason. Um, you know, the first three months, the shop was closed. I was working, though, with one of my guys. I had to let everybody go. Um, and then for three months, it was just me and one of my guys working and, you know, I had, uh, I had to do this whole next year's, I had 38 or like 40 board, 40 new boards were putting in production for 2021, 22. And so I was on a deadline. And so I was making prototypes and getting them to Brasino and Levi and the boys to, to test and doing a lot of testing. Um, but doors closed and people could make appointments to order boards. And at first it was definitely slow. Um, but the, the wing foiling really kicked in really hard. And so I was really, really busy with that, building boards, doing prototyping, um, just kind of getting the shop tuned up and all that. And then, you know, after about three months, we, we were able to open up legally and we did. And since then, everybody's back and, um, you know, we're busy. Yeah, I feel very fortunate. I was very surprised to see so many foils yeah. around Kanaha. Yes. Back it is wing the wing foiling has has been wow. you know a big a big sport that's growing quickly how, how do you explain that how do i explain that well i think yeah. it's very accessible to many if you can be 75 you can be 10 you know is women men easy? whatever it doesn't matter it's that easy it's hard right. for the first two weeks but once you get over that hump it's very easy and i think that that's the draw and um, light wind, it's amazing. Um, it's very peaceful when you're in the air um, and you feel like you're flying and you don't really get that sensation with anything else. Windsurfing you do to a certain degree, but the efficiency of foils and winging is, is amazing. It's not something that I'm gonna take over windsurfing. If it's a good four to five foot day or windsurfing, I'd much rather go wave sail. But, you know, summertime, it's flat here for the most part. It's windy. You can whip around. You can go upwind like nothing. You can go out at, at Hokipa and do a downwinder all the way to Kanaha, ride swells, let go of the wings. So there's a place for it in everybody's quiver, I think. It's an amazing, fun, added thing to, the, to what we do. So you think it's going to have its play? It's, uh, it's part on the, on the surfing scene also in the future. And it's not something that yeah. it, uh, uh, vanish. No, it's going to be. Stay. Yeah, no, it's here to stay. It's going to be bigger right. than windsurfing. I hate to say it because it's bigger than windsurfing. I hate surfing. to say it. Yeah, All right. a lot. No, interesting. It's very, yeah, it's much more accessible to a broader range of people. Um, and you can do it anywhere with very light winds. And the sensation you get uh, grabs you quicker than windsurfing that you have to put a little bit more time into to get the same kind of sensations. The, the sensation of flying through the air and, and very quiet and not a lot of, of bump and, you know, hitting the water, it, there's, it, there's nothing like it. But again, I'd much rather go wave sail and ride waves and feel that sensation than go foil. So okay. I think but it's, for think, me, it's an uh, added thing. Go ahead. To fly on the foil is something that, people might be scared of. I mean, uh, people not experienced. You see this, the board yeah, flying on know, top of the water. 
it's kind Maybe, of uh, but I, losing control. But I would the say like at the harbor, the harbor here in Kahului, um, you go on any given day and there's 40 to 50 people learning to wing. And again, you see anything from, you know, 10 year old kids to 75 year old grandmas doing it. So when I see that and you see, you know, the demographic that stand up surfing hits, it's going to be even broader than that. Yeah. At first it's maybe a little scary, but the, you know, the, the, the products coming along good on all sides from every brand. There's a lot of effort going into it. And, um, so it, it, it can be fun and it can be safe. All right. Good to know. So, yeah. Uh, and how do you compare it? You can visit into start point. Oh, you should. I mean, again, I have never felt a sensation that's that amazing, except when I started windsurfing. So same thing, but it's it's something new and different. And uh, you know, the energy that you can harness from a swell that isn't breaking is unparalleled in anything. So you're doing turns on something that is not breaking that you're doing on a six foot wave, you know? But again, for me, it's not gonna replace surfing or windsurfing. It's just an added thing that, yeah. that, that's super fun. Okay, good. Um, yeah. There's a question about the difference between, difference between uh, wing foiling and uh, windsurfing foiling. Do you see any difference? Yeah, both, both are extremely fun. Um, if you windsurf, as you guys all do, it's a great place to start windfoiling. It's the same sensation. I think it's easier to learn to windfoil if you're, if you're an already a windsurfer because you have something to hang on to that's connected to the board. So you're very connected to everything. And so it's a great way to learn to, to foil. And it's a great, it's, it's a lot of fun to windfoil as well because of the efficiency and light winds. And so same thing is that you can, get up, foil around, go upwind a lot. You can ride little swells. You know, you're very connected to um, the foil when you're wind foiling. The difference with wing foiling is you're a little bit more free to go downwind, let go of the wing, ride a swell with just the board. Whereas wind foiling, you're a little more connected and it's still fun, it's just different in its own way. So, but I would suggest riding, trying wind foiling first and um, to learn because it's easier than wing foiling if you're coming from a windsurfing background. So, Got it. but you know, both have their place and both are extremely fun, especially on the light wind. For me, when it's windy, I wouldn't go foiling. That's not the idea for me, you know, and you know, it's when it's, you know, 10, 10 to 15 knots, eight to 15 knots, you can be on a 4-0 planing around going upwind like you never have. Um, that's fun. The sensation All is right. very fun. Sounds like it. Um, let's talk about a little bit about shaping. Um, sure. How do you shape? How do you shape a board? You how do I shape the idea. Yeah, I sure. mean, you start with the idea. You start with the, um, and uh, also I want a little bit background about the materials. So like sure. the board, the yeah. the core of the board and the. The yeah. top of it. Well, I do, I do a lot of different stuff. So from surfboards to wind surfboards to foil boards. And so they're all built a little bit differently. And I think that's really cool about what we do here at the, the factory and the shop is, um, and I feel fortunate that I've been able to really experiment a lot. You know, my partners have been really, uh, Francisco and Lalo Goya, they've been really open about me being able to really try a bunch of different stuff construction wise design wise so I mean, for me a lot of times designs and ideas come from you know i'll ride a board i know how it feels you know maybe i'll go on a long mountain bike ride and i have time to think and things just kind of come in my head and I'm like oh i should try that or i should try this or sometimes you know a rider will come to me and you know develop an idea as well but um i mean basically what it is, is i get big uh big blocks of foam and i have a hot wire machine connected to my shaping machine that cuts the form of a blank out of it. And I use one pound and two pound EPS foams. Um, so I cut the blank out and then I have a computer shaping program. It's called Shape 3D. And um, that's what I use to design the board. And so usually I'll pick from something I know that I've already designed. So I have, you know, I have, I have eight years of board designs, my computer. And so 
I'll pick from something that I really liked or my last board and I'll make small changes to it unless I come up with something really crazy I wanted to try. And then um, I'll, I'll do the design. It goes on the machine, it gets milled. And then with wind surfboards, we have to add a hard foam on the bottom and the deck. Um, it's called Coracel in order to give some structural strength around one pound EPS, which has no strength. So the one pound EPS is really just there as a shape in the middle of the board. Um, so that gets vacuum bagged, sandwiched onto the, the, hard, uh, the soft foams, the EPS. From there, I'll reshape it, get any bumps out. We'll put all the inserts in the board, bin boxes, inserts, all that. And then the board gets laminated with carbons and S glass, hot coat, sanded, painted, you know, pads, stickers, texture, and then we get to go try the board. A lot of times we won't even paint them just because um, it's quicker. It saves about a week and we'll just test mm -hmm. and test, especially when I'm going through, like I did the last six months doing prototyping, I'll, um, we'll just sand them and, and, and ride them. And then if that's the board, we'll just put it to the side. And that's the board that we send to Cobra in Thailand to make a mold um, from there. So we do a lot of testing and a lot of prototyping. I mean, I think I have probably 40, 40 prototypes back here that were good, but there's something just quite not right for production, whether it's too turny or not fast enough or too, too fast and too stiff or whatever it is that we're feeling. So I'll adjust from there. One of the questions that the guys were asking how do you choose the uh, production out of all the custom? That's a good question. That that's definitely one of the hardest things. But I think over the you know ten or fifteen years that we've been doing this, we we think we have a pretty good idea of what is going to be important for the consumer and what they're trying to feel. And as I've gotten better at testing and working with my guys, you get a feel for yeah, this feel good. It's like Garden might get on the board and feels fast enough, but it doesn't have enough pop or on the freestyle or, you know, whatever it is our riders are feeling. And then in the end, I have to sort of weigh, gauge, you know, what's going to be best in a broad range of people using the board. And that's, it's hard, you know, cause you have pretty particular idea of what you like, but then someone else is very different. And that's something I learned early on is that one board might not work for someone, but it'll work well for someone else. I've always felt that. And that's, something that again i learned early on that um it all works but you just kind of got to find a base that you think is going to cover a broader range of people and I, i've had a lot of freedom here to do a lot of different things between all the goya stuff and all the quattro stuff so say with the pyramid the the full-on wave board with quattro i can really do what i want so there's you know i have an outlet for that real creative freedom not that these other boards aren't, but there's more parameters that we need. It needs to be fast. It needs to have a relatively good turn. It needs, you know, things like that balanced in it. Whereas the, the wave board for Quattro the Pyramid can be the more radical shape, which is, which is nice. Yeah. And I can say too, just related to, to design and how I come up with ideas. Um, I can say that surfing and the foiling has really opened my eyes a lot to design. Um, foiling being that you can do pretty much anything you want. Um, at first, anything you want. Now we're starting to see things are very important in the way a board flies and lands and bounces, but foiling really opened my eyes to doing different stuff and it still can work. So I've been fortunate to work with guys like Kai Lenny and Ian Walsh and, you know, Levi and Brauzinho and Camille and surfers. And so it's really helped kind of broaden my base of knowledge and ideas. So it all kind of blends together to help every different aspect of what I do. It's really amazing but, uh, the the board of uh, shapes in this shop. From a uh, windsurfing board, from uh, racing boards and uh, free ride boards, to freestyle to all kinds of wave for all waves in the world. Um, the wing foils are looking amazing. They look like spacecraft. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the surfboards you have from uh, Fishy uh, until uh, the guns for Jaws. Is, uh, I have to say that what, while I'm in this shop and uh, watching the pro prototypes and uh, testing some of them, it's like uh, it's going through my head like Keith is 
like doing so much uh, around here with these uh, shapes and it's so, uh, it covers everything. Almost everything you can do in the water. Yeah, I mean, I have been I have been fortunate to be able to like you know to work with all the different guys, and that's kind of helped me and my team. I couldn't do it without the team that I have here building the boards. Everybody is an important part of what we do, for sure. But uh, the bo- I have a just a follow up the question from the. <laughs> Last one. Uh, the sure. boards testing is taking place only in Hawaii, in Maui, or you test yeah. it also in other places? Mm. Well, the racing we do in Tarifa. So we work with Ben um, in Tarifa, and he does. I mean, the boards are built here, but we did all this um, uh, some testing here and some testing in Tarifa. Um, we have a we have a warehouse um, in Tarifa, and that's where Lalo Goya is based. One of my partners. So we have a, a basically a, a warehouse there where we do all of our distribution for Spain, France, um, and then we get all the product for Europe that we distribute out of Tarifa. So we have a really good base there as well. So I think more and more of the flat water testing will start being done in Tarifa. Hmm. The so, waveboards and then more the only... Free, yeah, well, waveboards mostly here in Hawaii. Um, you know, we'll see in the future if we do some in Europe because we do a lot of onshore waveboards as well. So, yeah, I can tell yeah. that uh, one of the biggest things that happened for us in Israel <clears throat> are the big waveboards. Yeah, how, how, how did you think about big waveboards when you live here on Maui and you hardly use them? Like, well, I think you know, Brazino's a big guy, he's 190, I think, and he's tall. Um, and then we have Waihu, which is more a side on a short place. So we do some testing there. Um, but yeah, I really rely on Brazino yeah. for the, the big wave or the big onshore wave stuff it's testing. It's open for us. It opens like a variety of conditions. Yeah. You can wave right like a lot more. Ever since. I think just in general, since we've introduced the quad and the thrusters back into windsurfing that, you know, shorter, more volume boards have just allowed people to ride more average conditions and have more fun because you're moving around and yet you're still able to turn the board which is what we're after yeah yeah okay Moan, you want to read some of the questions yeah, um, so they was asking uh, how do you see the board industry in the future in terms of uh, new design and material yeah that's a good question made a huge difference yeah, that's a good question. I mean, we're always, I think it all centers around here in Hawaii, what we do, um, and just developing new technologies and new materials. And, you know, I have some ideas. I'm trying, I, my personal boards, I don't build in sandwich. So I don't put the high density foams. I use a harder center foam. It's two pound EPS. And basically I, I lay them up with carbon. So what that allows me to do is um, basically when I get the board shaped on the machine, it the shapes the shape. It's not changing at all because when you build in one pound EPS, you're adding, you know, six mil on the bottom, three mil on the deck. So you're compensating on the inner shape to make it thinner so that when it gets to size, it's the right volume and shape. So there's a lot of, I mean, we do a good job of it, but things change. So that's one of the things that I've been working on for myself is boards that um, I'm not putting sandwiching on. So you just go straight to laminating like a surfboard. And so the shape is, is as true as possible. Um, the only concern about that is that you can't really jump the boards. I don't jump a lot, so I, I'm okay with that. But, um, you know, and, but I'm, I'm, that's something I'd like to develop and make more available once I'm good with how the boards last, because that's a concern. So, you know, stuff like that. And again, I'm fortunate to be able to um, test and try new materials. And, you know, the connection with Cobra in Thailand sometimes offers me um, materials, like access to materials that are, um, that, that are difficult to get. And so I'm always looking at new materials and ways to make the boards feel better, look different, you know, whatever it is, easier to build. Um, as far as changing in the future, I mean, what we do in production right now is pretty darn good. 
And the way we do them anyway is very similar to what we do here in Hawaii. We use the same materials, the same layups. We use S-glass. So we really put a lot of effort into um, the way we build our boards and, and do it as much as we can like here. And, and I, I think we've come up with some pretty cool um, innovations and ways to build the boards that are going to help them last and, and feel good because that's all really important from the resin you use to the fiberglass to the way to you lay it up. So it's a pretty you know, broad circle of starting here, going to Cobra and then to the customer. Um, things are going to evolve. How yet? I don't know. Um, but they will evolve. It's hard for me to say, oh, it's going to go this way because I don't know. It's just a slow evolution of trying to, you know, make things better. And it definitely takes time from what we do here to get it into production. So you're always a year or two years behind mm. because it just takes time. So another, another question was, uh, I don't know if Yaron is here. Uh, he was asking about uh, sheets from uh, uh, history are coming back. Like the pyramid can look like boards from the 90s, maybe longer. Yeah, well, it's not necessarily longer. I think it's more the, the narrower noses, that kind of thing. I, I, you know, shapes coming back, there's great things that come from back then. I but think what, uh, yeah, I think what's happening is, um, is there's some aspects from the shapes in the past that worked really well. And so we've had to go through this whole design cycle of, you know, trying really square short boards to, you know, this and that and this, but there's some things from the past that are amazing. And so I think what we've been able to do is make a really efficient rocker, which is kind of the base of everything. And then, you know, we made, we went short, so we had to do other things to make the board work well, bigger rails forward, you know. And then there's something about a rail from the past that was full to thin in a longer space of time. So it foiled, you know, it had a longer, quicker foil. So I'm starting to introduce those things. As a whole, I don't think the boards in the past were that great. There was aspects of them that worked well. So it's bringing those aspects into the newer things that we've learned in that shorter shapes are more efficient. Well, you can make them more efficient. You know, it's important. There's a lot of facets that go into it. But um, so, yeah, certain looks are going to be, but there's a lot more behind it that's not, um, that's not from the past. So, but yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's, and I mean, I have a new toe board that I like, but I think I like my board from four years ago better. So I'm going to go look see what the board is doing and try and reintroduce that into what I'm doing now. So it's important to not forget the past. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, the past, uh, uh, you, we, you guys used to uh, use the asymmetrical. Uh, yeah, there's now, one thing. Now I saw you use yeah, yeah, so I mean, I've introduced an asymmetrical shape for myself and I love it. Um, and I think what's allowed me to do that is that my shaping program allows me to work on each side of the board in the program so I can design it asymmetrically. And my board is the most asymmetrical board I think there's ever been. It's got, you know, one rail is bigger than the other in the front. The outline's different in the front. One rail foils quicker, one rail's fatter here. One bottom side has concave, the other has V. It's, yeah, it's crazy how different it is. And it works, so works. I think that the Israeli windsurfers would like to know if it can fit the Israel conditions because here it's most of the time uh, you, you ride the waves on certain. I mean, I, I think the board could. It's just you're going to get a different sensation going one way than the other. Um, and it's all about how you adapt. And I think for sure you could do something like that. But it, then it comes down more to your style of sailing and what you'd like to feel. So if you have an asymmetrical board that's made for rights, you know in theory you know maybe you're a kind of person like me that wants a shorter board on the bottom turn so you can turn quicker and then you want a longer one on the cutback because you like to push harder and want a longer turn so having an asymmetrical meant for here would work there but i think if i did a board for those kind of conditions it would be different than the board here it could still be asymmetrical but i would do it differently i would think differently so yeah it's all about just having fun and feeling things, it's what's important. So, what's up, Duran? Uh, How are you doing? Uh, there was a question about uh, fins. Yeah. 
Opa! Opa! Yeah, it's nice to see you again. I, I always know when he's here, he's either got the mask or the hood. Yeah. It's awesome. How, how do you call him there? How do you call him there? Uh, you ah, what's his name in Hawaii? What's his name? Uh, the Ron? The Big or... D. The Big D. The Big D. All right. The Big D. <laughs> אני אגיד בעברית, למי שלא זיהה, אהרון חכה. Yeah. Uh, also lately the, the surfboards. Yeah, yeah, There was a question about the fins. Sure. Uh, yeah. How did the fin uh, setting uh, change uh, the shape in the last 15 years? I think it's, uh, it's a big What's revolution. The, we're saying like as far as multi-fins or, or design and fins? Uh, no, the, the multi-fins and uh, the asking uh, how do you how is it like uh, that you feel now with, on a bigger board, uh, the same feeling you uh, used to get from a smaller board in the past? Yeah, again, I think it comes down to a combination of the multi-fin aspect and then also the shorter shapes that are more efficient for their lengths from the rockers to the outlines. So that allows you to ride more volume and um, get the same kind of turns. Because again, and you know, a lot of that comes from surfing. You can ride bigger boards and still get a turn that feels like a smaller board. I mean, maybe it takes a little bit more work, but at the same time, you're in, you're in below, below average conditions. And so you need the help of your fins and your, your board and the volume. In general, I ride more volume and less sail. Um, I don't like having my sail get in the way. And I like to feel the power of the wave as opposed to the power in my sail. So I can actually feel when I'm riding a wave and feel the energy of the wave and know when to turn based on the wave and not so much my sail. And yet the sail will help me get around the corner of the bottom turn or do a big aerial or project around a section. So I really try and use a sail as just an added feature to what the board's doing on the wave. Um, so yeah, fin, multi-fin, and board design have really brought the, the, the boards to, to the level they are now to where you can ride bigger boards and still feel the sensation of, smaller, of a smaller board. Okay, thank you. Uh, Moran, can you ask about uh, Sachi's question and the Aniv? Um, can you read it? Let's see it together. It seems, Sachi, it seems the big companies have uh, very similar shapes. For example, freestyle waves, you surf one company, you feel the same as the other, in your opinion. Everybody's just copying me now, just joking. <laughs> no, you know, I mean, everybody's looking for the same thing. So you're looking to go fast. You're looking to turn as much as you can. I think in general, I don't want to say everybody's looking at the same thing. So, you know, it, it, there's very good shapers out there and, and riders. And so, you know, I think as a whole, you, you're looking to go the same way. And, in, you know, as, as, as a consciousness of people, you feel the same energy. So a lot of the same kind of energy is going into a boards. I think what's different is, is how you 
how you can uh, associate with the brand that you prefer to ride. You know, does it feel good to you? What they do, what they stand for, the kind of riding they do, the kind of marketing they put out. Does that feel right to you? At least when I look at a brand and I decide to, you know, whatever I'm going to get, I like to see it as a whole picture and, and get to feel mm -hmm. part of something. And I, I think for me, it's more about that because yeah, everybody does make good shapes and, I'd like to say I make some of the best, but whatever. It's not about that. I work hard to make a good shape that people can appreciate. Sometimes I hit it. Sometimes I'm a little off and it's just the way it goes. And that's just the evolution of, of shape and having a company and doing designs. I mean, we really try and with our company put um, products out that we believe in that work well to our knowledge and that we're not overproducing and that we're, you know, we're trying to do a sustainable business and, and start making choices with our business that are a little bit more conscious about the materials we use and, and so on. I mean, you go as green as you can, but there's also only so much you can do. You've got to sustain a business. You've got to sell boards. You have to reach a certain target price, you, you know, so there's a lot of parameters. And um, I feel fortunate to be in the position to be able to do this but it can be difficult at times. I'm not complaining, but you know, you have to make choices and you go as green as you can. And, and you, and as you get bigger, you can make bigger choices about going more green and standing behind it and, and then slowly, but surely you move in a direction that you believe in. And I think as either you start out like that and you are really strong and adamant about what you do and you get to this point and you're already there or like us, you know, you do your best and, as you get bigger, you're able to make choices financially that you can commit to a product that's much greener, a resin or this or that, or do the development that needs to be done in order to make sure that it doesn't fall apart, you know, and um, that, you know, there's a lot of things too that, you know, there's a whole circle of sustainability in products and materials, you know, how was that product made, you know, so how will it go back and get recycled? So it's much more complicated than just going green. So, right. you know, but I'm, you know, fortunate to, I don't know, I kind of went off on a tangent, but. <laughs> so. uh, there is a little question from uh, Elan. Yeah, so maybe, yeah. yeah. Other, other companies are making uh, boards that can be either plaster or quad. Yep. And your, your board for or plaster or quad. And sometimes yeah. I, even I was, hoping that uh, I can try them both. So, yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I think a board can definitely work as both. There's no doubt about that in my mind. Um, and this year we considered doing it and I actually signed specs to do it. But then again, you run into number one cost and what the market will pay for. And so there's a lot of aspects that you got to look at. It's not just whether the shape is going to work or not, because we can do that. Um, does the customer really want to take the time to try both i'm sure you guys do i do because i have to a lot of people just want to throw their fins in and go um me, by the way. Yeah. I, I wouldn't change anything. so and then then you have a weight factor you have a drag factor so it's a bigger picture than just one thing it's not that we like firmly believe it only can be thruster or only quad we try again, you know, are we going to switch to a slot box or not? So there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that, you know, we're thinking about these things, of course, you know, the other guys are doing it. Should we do it? Do we want to offer the customer more of an experience for the same money? And then there's a weight issue, a drag issue. So we try and make the best <laughs> choices to try and cover a broad range of people and kind of still stick with what we believe. Um, I'm a thruster guy all the way. I play with quads. I like them, but I'm a thruster guy in the way I sail. Even yesterday, offshore condition. You know that that might have been nice to have a little yeah. bit of a quad, but then I'd ride a specific fin to help me be more pivoty, like a thruster. So, um, you know, so yeah. I, I, how do I answer that question? <laughs> um, but why yeah, are you a, a thruster guy? Why? Why, why, why do you prefer the thruster on top of the quads? Well, it's the way I sail and the way I push off the bottom. I push really hard and quick off the bottom and the thruster allows me to pivot and then thrust. So you pivot, thrust, pivot, thrust. So it's a, it's a more push, it's more on and off 
when you're turning. Um, and then once you're in a turn, yeah, and you have something to turn off of, you can kind of follow through. A quad is more intuitive. It's a, it's, if you're good on quads, it's a more fluid, um, steady kind of turn always. So you can, you can make little micro adjustments, but you lose more speed in the micro adjustment. A thruster pivots and keeps its speed on its own more, but you can't make as fluid of a uh, direction change as you can on a, on a thruster as you can on a quad. It's real subtle things. It's just, I go real vertical with the way I sail. And a, a quad, if I turn, it stops more. Whereas a thruster, it'll, I'll pivot and it'll thrust. So that's why I like thrusters better. So. Okay. And, uh, other people's uh, opinion about that? Like you hear well, I'd say like opinion. Brauzinho, yeah, yeah, Brauzinho loves a quad. I mean, he's only quads, except on onshore where he uses a thruster. So he's more powerful. He push, pushes harder. He stands more upright than me. Um, so he loves the quad because he's strong and he can push through turns longer and hold it longer. And he also rides a drivier sail than me. I ride a pivot, more pivoty sail. So that allows me. Levi, usually when it's bigger, will ride, well, he kind of goes both ways. When the conditions are a little bit bumpier and, and kind of more on and off, he'll ride a thruster. If it's bigger, longer waves, um, you know, he'll tend to ride a quad because he can draw, a, you know, you're not trying to generate speed, you're trying to control it more. And so the quad, I think, controls speed better, especially at high speeds. So whereas the you know, say like on the Jaws guns, they're all quads because you're, you're trying to stay on the wall of the wave. You're trying to control a lot of speed. Thrusters are better on the low end to generate speed. Quads are better on the top end to control speed in general, my experience. All right. All right. Moran, get some questions. Get some more questions from the crowd. A lot of questions, actually. Uh -oh. and if I can add something to this, uh, to what Kip yeah. just said, I would say all of you maybe try to sail on a thruster if you always sail on a quad. And the opposite, because uh, what you just explained, why you are trying uh, uh, different boards and uh, trying to turn it into differently you really find out what is better for you totally. for example i found for myself that i love the thruster as well and uh, yeah just try to inspect for yourself and find the best for you yeah it's funny when i go onshore sailing say in oregon and i like the bottom turn of the quad but i like the off the top of the thruster better so I don't know how I'm going to deal with that. Maybe an asymmetrical fin thing or something. <laughs> but, you know, so there, there are things on onshore that I, that I like better in the quad than the thruster. But I like both for certain reasons. Um, and what is the difference between the, the Goya boards and the, the Quattro boards? Well, I think the, just the in same a, place. Yeah, in a general tendency, Francisco and Brazino have different needs than me and say Levi. Um, in general, I would say that the, the quattros are maybe not quite as fast, but they turn a little bit more, turn a little more back foot. Um, they're a little more surf oriented. So, cause that's in general what, you know, I'm about, you know, Brauzinho is competing all over the world. Francisco likes a, you know, a faster surfier board. But you're right. I mean, there's things that, that both of them have that go between the two. You know, it's hard not to bring ideas from both into the other. So they're not so different, but I definitely try and give them a different flavor. You know, maybe one has more tuck, softer rail up front. So it's not being going to be quite as fast on the, you know, to get going and planing, but it's going to turn more. You know, the other one, the edge might go further forward. And I really try and take the ideas that Francisco and Brauzinho and the, and the, you know, yard in from the freestyle and to, to put into the Goya boards so that it is something that is different than what I think, you know, but I'm always going to put my flavor on both. It's just the nature of things. So. Uh, Gadi had a question. Oh, okay. Yeah, Gadi. Uh, sure. 
uh, ask about the surfboard. Sure. Actually, you started shaping surfboards something like two or three years ago. No, before. it's been probably 20 years. Wow. Yeah, but I've only just been doing it for myself. It's been more than that, but yeah, it's really gained traction in the last two or three years. Yeah. So, you I mean, shaped, you shaped the uh, surfboards for me for the towing. Yeah. Maybe 15 years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. So I've been doing boards for quite a long time. And it was mostly for people I knew or tow boards or, you know, things that, that the normal shapers didn't quite have a grasp on that from windsurfing and all the speeds that we, we would get, um, I was able to, you know, tap into that and know a little bit about it. And then slowly but surely, I mean, we love to surf. So it was natural that I built our surfboards from there. You know, I slowly started getting, you know, one good guy, local kid would ride the boards and, you know, surf well, and then someone else would come and then, you know, I think really things started to take off when I, I started working with Imai DeVault. He's somebody on the, on the QS series. And it's been, I think, four years now that I've been working with him. That was a huge step. And then, you know, Kai Lenny came to me. I think it's been almost three years now. I started making guns for him and windsurf boards and foil boards. And so that's been a really huge help as well, um, developing boards in different shapes. And then, you know, just slowly but surely, different riders came and from different sports that wanted a surfboard or, and so it's just really developed like that. And I was stoked yesterday at pipe, the trials, you know, three of three, I had three guys in the trials. Yeah. So it was um, Logan, Ian Gentile, and then um, Imai Duvall. They didn't make the main event, but they did well. And then, you know, Kai Lenny and Ian Walsh were at Mavericks yesterday riding my boards. And so, there's been a lot of energy like that, which really helps. So I've been fortunate again to work with the right people and then also have the right team to build the product that they want. Because what I build for the Jaws guns, no one builds in surfing. You know, vacuum lamb, carbon, and negra, the shape. So it's, it's a combination of me and what we're able to provide here. And that's a reason that people will come. So it's not just me. I'd like to take the credit, but it's not at all. You know, from Nano who airbrushes them, from Mike that vacuum lambs them to the materials we use. So it's com combined effort. So I'd like, yeah, again, I'd like to say it's just the shape, but it's definitely not. It's an important part, but I'm realizing, especially with the guns, and I think that that's also given us an access into the surfing world is the, the materials that we use and the different things that we do, vacuum laminating, carbon, inegras, carbon and negra mix and so I really do put an effort into new materials and trying stuff because that's our way into surfing it's not just the shapes there's a lot of amazing shapers out there and so it's hard to compete against someone like JS or Lost or Merrick that's been established for 40 years so my angle is you know good shapes but technology and that'll bring people around that'll feel that the shapes are good but they're like wow this technology is cool too so it's a mix uh, I think guys, any more questions? Alon, can you uh, can you join us? Yeah, Alon cannot uh, speak it on mute, so if you can unmute Alon, um, I can see another question. How come on bigger sizes, like uh, 105 liters, they don't make okay. thrusters? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I mean, that kind of stuff, I'm not, you know, to make a mold, to make it worth making a mold for a big board, you know, you have to sell, say, 100 boards. It's not a wave board that we're going to sell enough boards to warrant making a mold. And again, I think, you know, you have to, again, make choices that aren't, um, you know, you just can't afford to do it because it's not. It's not, there's no return on your investment. And something like that, we have the option of making anything you want custom here. And so I think that also allows us to make that choice to not make that board because you know if they really want a board, they can order something here and we can make it. Um, and I think that that's the main reason that there's just not enough of a market. Same on the small boards. Though yet this year, you know, we're, we do a 54 liter and a 60 liter in the quads. Kids. Yeah, for kids and small women and so, and then, you know, you have to put the stance different and all that, but so we do try and tap into, you know, we want the kids to grow and come into windsurfing and have an option for them. Um, 
so we we found it where then a few yeah for sure i mean i've seen a lot more here um i know in 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 tarifa there's a lot of kids and yeah. in, in spain you know in europe it seems like they have more of a program to get kids into windsurfing here in the u.s not so much but i mean it's more up to the parents and friends and all to do that yeah awesome yeah, teach a lot of kids. Uh, I think what we have in Israel is the the, um, the competitive uh, windsurfing scene. It's very very strong. Uh, yeah. So it brings a Which lot helps. of kids. Yeah, it brings a lot of kids. They start to to compete when, when they're very young. But when they That's are awesome. like 15, 16, they're uh, yeah. getting through fun boarding as well. So yeah. um, then many of them are staying. So, but That's they have great. the basics, uh, yeah, it, it, it gives a, a big push to the windsurfing in Israel. Yeah, yeah, totally all, awesome. All the time producing more and more uh, young kids and getting into windsurfing. Yeah, nice. Um, we don't have uh, that many windsurfing schools, but we have the windsurfing uh, competitive uh, clubs. So okay. the kids starting there and <clears throat> from there, some of them, um, do carry keep on. Going. Yeah, keep going. Um, but we have uh, different questions about uh, the atmosphere in, uh, in Hawaii. Some, some uh, uh, I don't know, scary stuff that happened to you in the water. Some fun stuff. Some of the, the <laughs> yeah. relations uh, between the, all the windsurfers that we see on, on the videos. How you like uh, together? Yeah, I mean, in general, it's a fun community and everybody gets along just fine. And, you know, we're always um, meeting at the spot just because that's where we go. Um, but, yeah, everybody gets along for the most. There's always stuff, you know, that happens, drama here and there, like anywhere. But, no, it's awesome. And, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing to be able to go out and see Ricardo or Brazino or Levi on a wave as you're sailing out and, you know, bottom turning and hooting and yelling and having a good time you know, we're all in this together. So it's fun. As far as the, you know, amazing experiences, I mean, just yesterday sailing around, just looking up at the mountain and the wind. And I just really try to take it all in every time I go just to enjoy it. And, you know, out of an hour and a half session yesterday or an hour, I got one amazing turn and that was all I needed. The rest was so, so, but that one turn is like, okay, that made it worth it. I got that turn. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to try and get another couple. And I took another couple waves and I was like, oh, it's done. I'm done. And then, then I was out, um, you know, and then the day before I was out toe surfing at outer Sprex and I have a lot of really good memories of toe surfing a lot of big days out at outer Sprex, um, you know, going super early, watching the sunrise and it's glassy and, you know, 10 to 15 foot waves. Um, so that, that's cool. And then you also take, into consideration you know yesterday somebody was at Honolulu and they got bit by a shark and almost lost their leg and died so you got to always kind of like step back and realize you know that we are very fortunate to be here in Hawaii and riding the ways we do and just have respect for the ocean and I even had that thought toe surfing I was sitting in the water on my board and I was like maybe I should sit on the ski and wait for the wave as opposed to on the board you know so just <laughs> yeah it's a day-to-day -day thing you know i think more than anything this place is just i've just been fortunate to be able to do what i do and create a business around it and create a network of people that we work with and friends around the world and just try and share that experience and that feeling that we get here and in what we produce we're not perfect we do our best you know there's things to deal with and like in anything but it's amazing and i get every day i come to the shop and i'm happy to come to the shop for the most part <laughs> <laughs> that's so, good yeah um what okay. else one one question maybe it could be the last uh, you told me that you have some connection to israel that might even bring you to israel someday yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean my wife's family is we have a lot of israeli relations and so does um my dad's side of the family um so he grew up in, um, uh, I'm drawing a blank now, right next to Morocco up there. Algeria. Yeah, Algeria. He grew, so I have Algerian roots as well. Um, so yeah, I have a lot of 
Israeli roots in one way that I should probably one day explore and especially my wife's side of the family. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And a lot of them live in France now. Um, some have moved back to Israel. So yeah, I, I, you know, after this and just her family, uh, you know, I feel a little, a little draw. I think I want to come mostly for the food and the people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, in Bat Gali, it's spot. The most yeah. difficult thing about the singing in Bat Gali yeah. is to choose between falafel or shawarma. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I like that. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. <laughs> uh, you are more than invited. Thank you. Israel. Appreciate that. And we would love to have you yeah. sailing and speaking. Hopefully this world opens up a little more soon. <laughs> it should. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, there's a, a question about heavier heavier sailors. What about them? Uh -huh. I mean, for uh, like um, bigger volume uh, wave boards, like more than 110 liters. Is it something that is possible? 100%. You know, I made Antoine Albo a couple boards, you know, and he's up in the 240, I think. So I don't make a lot of them, but there's no reason that you can't. You just have to bring the, the volume up and make some adjustments and, you know, but yeah, there's no reason we can't for sure. Maybe the board needs it's to be a little bit longer. It's very interesting because uh, some people in Israel using the uh, uh, sub, uh, sub boards, yeah, with, uh, with sails and lighter wind, yeah, because you have more volume and it's still uh, maneuverable. But if you have a yeah. windsurfing board, it can be better. For sure, it could be better. I mean, I think you're gonna be moving around faster for for the available wind, um, and you're gonna be getting tighter and 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 more quick turns. Yeah, um, I think the, the nice thing of yeah, exactly. I think the nice thing about a sup is it's just very stable, and you know you kind of put around and get your waves. But yeah, definitely, you know, you can, uh, you can go a little wider, maybe just a little longer, keep the deck a little bit more domey in the back, a little flatter in the front, you know, many things you can do to make a, a more voluminous board. You know, that's what's cool about custom is you can say, well, I want it to be quicker planing, you know, and not have as much turn, or you can have more turn and not as quick planing because, it, you know, when it's light anyway, you're not really planing around. You're just trying to putt around and catch some swell. So, you know, there's so many ways you can go. It's just about figuring out what you like to do. And then I have to figure out how to get you there. <laughs> All right. You're very interesting. Uh, what else? People are interested. How old are you? How old am I? <laughs> I'm 50. 50. Yeah, I'm 50 this year. Yeah. Ah, so, congratulations. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> and what, what, how do you find yourself uh, in your age? I mean, uh, are you from the old windsurfers or the younger or something, or something in between? I'm something definitely in between. In between. Yeah. I, I didn't, you know, as far as my career in windsurfing, I didn't come from the heyday when you could make a ton of money from windsurfing. So I was kind of like in that middle zone. And um, yeah, I came after the full, you know, Maui scene, first, not after, but yeah. yeah, the first wave. So I definitely feel like I'm in the middle and, um, but no, I feel great. You know, I've never felt better. I mean, definitely at night you go to bed sore and more tired. It takes longer to recover, <laughs> but, and I yeah. think you have to make an effort to, to train more, which I don't do enough. And I'm trying to make more time for that so that you don't get injured and all, but um. I definitely enjoy my sessions more and they're shorter. Mm -hmm. I get more enjoyment just out of being in the water and, and just feeling certain things as opposed to searching for something or, you know, and, um, but then they're definitely shorter because I just have less time and less desire to be in the water as long. So, you know, I, I enjoy hanging with my family. I enjoy surfing a lot. I enjoy the windsurfing, I enjoy the foiling. I enjoy work, so it's more of a balanced approach as opposed to just windsurf, eat, windsurf, eat, windsurf. Yeah. Of course. So, yeah. Very good. Okay. Um, maybe last question. Uh, last sure. Question and 
we'll let you design uh, our next board. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> What's the last question? Okay. Uh, what do you find harder on, on your body? Windsurf or wave surf? Like surfing or, or? Yeah. I'd say overall windsurfing on an overall level is harder on my body. I'd say surfing is harder on my upper back and my neck. Yeah, the way you paddle and you stick your neck out like that. So I'm much more sore in here when I surf a long day. I stretch a lot. I try and do yoga if I can. It's just finding time, you know, and I do try and do somewhat of a workout here and there. Um, I haven't done enough. I kept saying, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. But just finding the time, you have to make the time. I think that's more than anything. And then, you know, doing different things at different times helps. Like I went toe surfing and my whole body is sore, <laughs> getting yanked around. And <laughs> but it felt good because it pulled me in ways that I don't normally get pulled. And so um, I like to be active, like doing something I love when I'm working out. But I think it's time to have a bit of a program where you do a more broader, just a workout style thing, because that's going to help me stay in the water and stay not injured. I don't want to get injured. And I definitely don't go as hard. Like yesterday, you know, I was sailing, I was on a four Oh, it's, you know, it's four to six, maybe an eight footer. And, um, it's bumpy. And if you really want to capitalize yesterday and, and sail, well, you have to really attack. You're not, there's no hesitating. If you hesitate, you're going to get hurt. So in general, I was not feeling the attack. So I was going very easy you know, backing off of sections. And then when I felt it, I would get a nice turn. But like I said, I only got one really good turn yesterday that felt like, okay, this was worth, that was enough for me. So, and then other days, you know, you're more on, it's the conditions are right for you and you can attack. And those are, those are the days that, um, not that I live for, but that's why I windsurf. Yeah. Cause you feel like you're, you're like a bit in control for a moment. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And I did it. I flew all around the world for that. And I still do for surfing. Yeah. You know, for surfing, I fly around the world to get that feeling. All right. All right. I think we're done here. Um, Skip, uh, thank, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you, everybody. It was very uh, enriching. Small present. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> uh, so we will remind us. Thank you. Thank you. Just Perfect. Drink. Thank you, guys. Water. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. This is going to be great. And thank you so, so much for yeah. having us. Thanks, guys. We'll do a little. Yeah, thank you very much. Garden. It was very <laughs> enriching. And um, some of us weren't in, uh, didn't come to Maui yet. So maybe we still have the dream. Yeah, Just please come. Come enjoy. Good. Come check out the conditions. Check out our shop. Come test yeah. some boards. That's what it's about. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank Aloha. you. Bye bye. Ciao. Thank bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> Ooh, everybody's ready to go to bed. <laughs> okay. Now, now, usually, they, some of them are leaving and some of them are staying. Cool. Yeah, yeah, you can open yeah. the mic. That's awesome. Uh, That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> You can open the, everybody's mics and guys, you can. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. very much. Thank you. guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, Amelech. Thank you, as Amelech. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. KT the king, that's what they say. <laughs> that's cool. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Doing our best over here. Thank you very much. Good night. You're welcome. Thanks for coming in. It's still light over there, though, no? <laughs> no, it's only 10. <laughs> oh, it's only 10. But it looks like it's still light. Somebody look, or maybe there's somewhere else. That wasn't in Israel. Ah, uh, okay. What would you suggest to go on after the rocks yesterday? Talk to Pio at Maui Finn for some new fins. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Oh, you want the rock? <laughs>
Wow. Yeah, I know, yeah. What's up, Eyal? How are you doing? Good, Keith. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, yeah. Cool. I'm glad. Awesome. How's your family? Everybody good, good. We meet, we meet awesome. Maui. I bet. Yeah. I bet you do. Yeah, yeah. So, you planning on coming back maybe next year or something? Hopefully. We, we don't know yet, but we will come visit again for sure. Good. It's hard not to, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Good to see you. Thank you. Nice, nice to see you. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao. Morning. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Away. What's that? Uh, can I ask a question? Sure. One, sure. I have a question. Sure. What place you want to surf and you've never been there? That's a good question. Surf or windsurf? Windsurf. 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 That I've never been. Wow. Space. Space. Yeah. That's I a good saw one. movies on uh, Brazil, on LA, even LA, Los Angeles. Yeah. Uh, what place you've never been? You know, I've never been to Scorpion Bay in Baja, and I'd like to go there. I think that'd be fun. It's a really long right-hand point. It only works for wind a couple months out of the year, and um, it has to be a specific direction swell. Um, I, I would do that. I would, I would make the effort to go there. That's somewhere that appeals to me. Okay. So, yeah, Scorpion Bay, Baja. That's the spot. <laughs> Punta San Carlos? No, Punta San Carlos I've been hundreds of times. It's much further south. Oh. Yeah. We saw your very, movies um, on YouTube. Yeah, you, yeah, there's some cool stuff, huh? <laughs> I've been fortunate yes. to be able to sure. travel a lot, for sure. So. <laughs> okay, guys. It has to... Thanks, guys. Going, yeah. so see you. See you back in Israel in a few weeks. All right, on. Ciao. Ciao. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye bye. Ciao. Yeah. 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 אתם יכולים לשחרר את עצמכם מהמצב של המיוט, ומי שרוצה אפשר... מה קורה, קפלן? וואלה, אילן, מה קורה? מה עם האוטו? מה, רק אתה ואני נשארנו, אה? או שיש עוד אנשים? לא, יש עוד אנשים, אבל... אה, יש פה עוד מיני, אבל הם מחוברים. לא, צריכים לשחרר את המיוט, מי שרוצה לדבר. כן, הם לא עשו המיוט. זה השלב של הצחוקים עכשיו, יש איזה עשר דקות כאלה. איזה קטעים. אתה באילת, אילן? לא, אני ביפו. אני עדיין פה, קיט כבר הלך, אם אתם רוצים עוד לקשקש קצת, אני פה וגם דורון, אבל לא רואים אותך. לא רואים אותך. אולי כבר תנו תחזית ליום שבת בבת גלים? 